Well, good morning, everybody. It's a beautiful morning here in central Kentucky. Kind of cold this morning, just a hair below freezing, but it's going to be a beautiful day. And so first project I've got going on here is to plant this tree that I picked up at Lowe's yesterday. This is a uh, autumn blaze maple. And these things get, well, you can't see it because <laughs> the camera. There we go. These things get really beautiful in the autumn of the year. And, uh, you know, when you buy things like this from Lowe's, I mean, you get a pretty tall tree. It's probably eight or nine feet tall. And it's, uh, it was way less money, way less money than going to the local nursery. So I'm going to try this this time. Now we've got some trees back there that we did buy from the nursery and I'm trying to put out like different things. You know, I want some variety in the yard. So I've got our Northern red oak over there. I've got a tulip poplar back there which is the official state tree of Kentucky, by the way. Got a hybrid poplar over here. Got a ginkgo tree. I got a wildfire black gum over there. So I'm trying to put some variety out in the yard. You know, it gives us a little bit of wind block for the house because we live up on a hill. We get some pretty nasty thunderstorms and sometimes the wind will howl through here and tear things up. So maybe these trees, once they become mature, will give us a little bit of wind block maybe a little bit of energy savings in the summertime and they'll be beautiful and aesthetically pleasing also that's the plan so i've measured this out with a really long tape measure because i'm kind of ocd so <laughs> i want these things to be you know kind of symmetrical in the yard and anyway i guess it's time to start digging and stop talking hey tucker are you gonna come help he probably would if i no, if i let him out he'd run away He'd go look for the mailman. Man, I tell you what, look at that beautiful soil. Now we do have, in this part of Kentucky, we do have a lot of clay in various places, but I live up on top of a hill, of course, about 300 feet up above the Kentucky River. And we've actually got some really good topsoil. There's probably, usually when you dig a hole, there's probably eight or 12 inches of this. There's a little bit of clay in it but there's some really good organic material in there too. I mean, this is just, this is the best soil you can find. I mean, you can grow just about anything in that stuff. Pretty blessed, because I've lived in some places around here before where the soil is just terrible. So it's actually nice to be able to go down eight or, eight or 10 inches and not hit rock, not hit clay, you know. Now, one of the things that, I do like about these trees from Lowe's is that you can see how that they uh, had them in a pot and so you know like if, if we go get a tree from the nursery they always have them burlapped and they have rope and wire and everything around there and they always tell you not to take the burlap off well my experience has been that if you don't take the burlap off and you leave it on there and just stick it in the hole like that the way they tell you to then it takes several years before the tree will start growing because it's basically root bound. I mean, it's alive and it's getting nutrients and it's getting what it needs, but the roots can't spread out. You know, they can't go anywhere until that burlap degrades. And so it takes several years, you know, before they start to show any growth. And I mean, life is short, you know, I don't have a hundred years to watch a tree grow i want to see a little bit of growth before i die hopefully you know so so the cool thing about this is it's not root bound it's ready to go right now it's got this whole field to grow in if it wants to there's nothing stopping it nothing it hold nothing holding it back you know so i gotta take this tag off of here but i left it on there until i got it planted because it gives you a good place to grab the tree without damaging the bark so i just gotta take that off and I believe that we'll probably see this thing budding out here in another, uh, I'd say a couple more weeks. Usually about the middle of April is when our trees really start to do their thing around here. So I can't wait. It's going to be pretty. So I guess the last step is I have to run some stakes in the ground and tie it up because I got to give it time to establish its roots, you know. And, uh, you know, it's springtime, a storm will blow it over pretty easy. So I got to tie it up, give it a little support. And the other thing I have to do is put these on there. I found this product online. It's called Tree Shield. And uh, come on, camera. There we go. Sorry about that. 
you can see the uh, details on the package there so these things are really cool because you just uh well as you can see there you just roll them up they snap into place around the bottom of the tree and uh, you know around here we have a lot of deer that's why we do this the deer will just absolutely destroy anything you put out flowers bushes trees they don't care it looks like a buffet to them so if they see you plant something they will be there that night to eat it so and uh so these stakes will kind of help to deter them a little bit if we put these around the bottom then the bucks won't be so gung-ho to use this as a rubbing tree and hopefully it'll survive all right got a little bit of a uh, rope on there to give it some support this is just temporary i left it kind of loose so that it won't tear up the bark but at the same time you know if the tree starts to sway the rope will catch it now i'm going to put these things on there they're kind of cool you know you can see how they're flexible and you can see those little tabs at the top that match up with holes at the bottom so you can stack these things you know if you have a tall tree you can you can stack them you know kind of like legos kind of cool It's a nice sunny day, but we're sitting in the shade thanks to this artillion canopy. I think I like this thing. So now I have moved on to getting my grass seed put out. I'm working back here on the back of the property overlooking the river. And the problem is there's such a slope to this that, you know, if you don't have grass, it, uh, it tends to wash out pretty quickly. You get a lot of erosion. so. This channel right here was the worst. You know, there was like a two foot wide channel where you could just see, you know, like all of the water on this hill gets funneled right into here. And every time I'd put grass seed out and straw it and start to uh, water it a little bit, you know, it takes several days for the grass to germinate and come up. And we would always have a, th a thunderstorm in between there somewhere. I mean. You know, it's hard to get a full week, let alone two weeks of dry weather here. So, you know, my seed would wash away before it got a chance to do anything, basically. So I went to Lowe's this time. I'm going to try this and see what happens. These are those uh, seed mats or germination blankets, whatever you want to call them. I'm going to try these and see what happens. They're supposed to control erosion a little bit better. So I roughed it all up, seeded it again, put the mats down in the worst part, and then put a little extra straw around it and uh, I guess I'll get out the water hose here in a little while and try to keep this moist we do have about three or four days of dry weather here so the seed that I put out in this area is that uh, annual ryegrass and that stuff tends to come up a lot faster so I'm thinking if I can get something to come up really quickly then you know it'll shore up the soil and then, you know, later on I can put the grass in there that I want, some fescue or something like that. But right now I just need to try to get it to where it's more erosion resistant. And then, of course, we got that area that I showed you earlier that I've cleaned out. Got all the bush and honeysuckle and stuff out of there. So it's just a nice, pretty wooded area now. I sowed that down with grass seed real heavy. Um, there's already a little bit of grass in there, so I didn't put much... Uh, in the way of straw or mulch in there, I just kind of roughed it up, seeded it, and then I covered it. I turned my uh, chain harrow upside down so the smooth side was facing down and I just kind of worked the seed into the soil. So hopefully it'll come up pretty soon too. So I think that that's just about all of the grass seed project that I have to do around here right now. So got a tree planted today, got some grass seed out. I guess I'm gonna move on to something different. And by the way, you can tell that it's allergy season because my nose <laughs> has been running like a faucet here lately. Probably the last four or five days. So I can always tell when the trees are about to start pollinating because my sinuses let me know. So I guess the next project I'm gonna do today while I've got some dry, nice weather is to do something with the floor in this trailer. Um, this one, catch my door here before the wind tears it off this one was not treated the other trailer that i had they had a treated floor in it but this one wasn't apparently or at least that's what they told me and it doesn't look treated 
And you know, we run ATVs and side-by-sides and the tractor sometimes and various things, wet, muddy boots and stuff in and out of here. So I want to do something to kind of protect this wood. I thought and thought and thought about what I wanted to do because there's lots of different ways you can go. I've seen guys use those tiles that you can snap together like you would use in a garage floor or something. Um, I've seen guys use linoleum or vinyl and just roll it out and cut it to fit. I've seen guys use bed liner material. Um, some guys just paint it with exterior paint. There's lots of different things you can do. But I think what I'm going to do, I don't really mind the look of the wood. And, uh, you know, I've already got my e-track and my anchors and stuff in the floor there and i could take them out but to be honest i just really don't want to because every time you take like the e-track over there you got a lot of bolts in there and every time you run those out um you know it kind of reduces the holding capacity of those fasteners when you put them back in the same holes you know so i really don't want to take that stuff out i think the easiest thing to do and probably the best option for me is just to treat the floor because uh, that's really all I need. I'm not looking for it to, you know, look awesome or or look like an actual RV in here. I just want something that's going to be protected and last a long time. So I went and got some waterproofer. I, I said I would never get Thompson's ever again because years and years ago I had a lot of bad luck with Thompson's. But um, I ended up getting some Thompson's water seal. And I think I'm just going to roll some of that on the floor. Just give it some treatment, some protection. And then I'm going to open the doors, leave the doors open all weekend so it can air dry and get all the fumes and stuff out of here. And I think that'll work pretty good. It'll be easier to put on because it'll be easy to go like, like with the E-Track over there, for example. You know, that Thompson stuff will just run down in the holes and soak and it'll be easy to put on. It'll work good, I think, for me. So I'm going to go that route and I cut a template. This isn't it, but I used this big cardboard box and I cut a template out and I took it to Lowe's with me to try and use it to size up some cabinets. And I think I'm gonna put one cabinet here in the middle. They've got a cabinet that's kind of cut like that on the back. So I think I'm gonna buy one of those to put in the middle and then I'm gonna make a countertop to put on top of it. So then I'll have my cabinet space for paper plates and cups and things like that down here. You don't have a nice countertop to use for, you know, if you're making a sandwich or if you want to set a microwave oven or something on there or whatever. And I'm going to run a big power strip right here to connect to the generator. And, uh, of course, the TV goes over there. I might put another cabinet up there. So that'll give us what we need just for primitive camping. Again, I'm not going for anything super fancy. Just want to do some primitive camping. And it'd be nice just to have a table inside in a dry area where you can make some food, sandwiches, whatever, um, during the day. So I think that's what I'm gonna do up here. And like I said, I cut a template, so I'm sizing that up and planning that out right now. I guess that'll be the next thing I do to the trailer. But for now, I guess I'm just gonna go clean this real good, uh, get everything out of here and clean it real good. And then I'm gonna put some Thompson's water seal on it and let it dry the rest of the weekend. What do you think, Tuck? Does that sound like a good plan? Yeah, I think so. Let's get started. The days go by fast. So I've got the Thompsons going on and uh, this color is called natural cedar. And I mean, it's not a bad color, but it's not what I was expecting. It's got a lot of, I mean, the camera never does it justice, but from the naked eye, it has a lot of pink in it. Maybe it'll dry a little more golden brown. I don't know, but I kind of wish uh, I had gotten a different tint, but Anyway, it's going on pretty well, and like I said, it'll give us a little protection, and it won't look bad, but it's probably going to make me want to do the walls, too. Eh, oh, man. <laughs> Maybe I should have just gotten clear instead of getting a tinted one. Oh, well, it's going on now. Can't stop at this point. Well, I bought one gallon, and this is an 8.5 by 24 foot trailer. I've used one half of a gallon so far. And I got the whole thing done, you know, at least most of it. I do have the trim work still to do. I need to go find a paintbrush so that I can do the trim work. Um, so I've got a few 
trim pieces to do, but the floor is done. I got a coat on there that says that one coat is sufficient, so that's all I'm gonna do. And I've still got a half of a gallon left to do the ramp door out here, so I think it's gonna end up being plenty, which is good, because I was a little worried about that. So there's the finished product. It's still drying, but that's what it looks like. I guess it kind of does look like cedar, but it's gonna probably change a little bit more as it dries. Um, not too bad. It doesn't look too bad. The hard part was getting the trim done. Cause that stuff that Thompson's is easy to uh, splatter everywhere if you're not careful. But anyway, I'm just glad to have a little bit of protection on the floor. Got the ramp done and the little flap down there. So it's nice to have some protection on there. So maybe if we get a little mud or something in here, we can just push it out with a broom and then gently spray it and it'll be okay. But I think that's enough projects for one day. I gotta go in here and get cleaned up because we have yet another family cookout tonight. It's that time of year, guys. We like to have family cookouts. There's absolutely nothing wrong with having burgers and dogs on a Saturday night and some L81 soft drink. If you guys ever come through Kentucky, stop at a store and get you some L81. It's delicious. <laughs> All right. I'll let you go. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you later.